So first of all, I want to say that I really appreciate to be with you all together so many times, and of course today also. Thank you for your association. And I was asked to read some verse, so I choose verse number 69 from Bilab Kuzumanjali. Just by chance, as we say. So, and of course, you are all invited to share. I will just read, and if you have some inspiration, please, I ask you, everyone, share your feelings and your realizations in connection with this topic. Thank you very much. So, translation are set. Can we start? Good. Sakam Tvaya Sakini Kunja Krihe Sarasyaha Svasyastate Kushoma Bhavita Bhushanena Shringaritam Vidatati Priyam Ishwarisa Ha ha bhavishyati mat ikshana gochara kim. My dear friend Rupa Manjari, when will I be able to see you with my mistress? decorating her dearest one with flower ornaments in the grove cottage on the bank of her own lake. My dear friend Rupa Manjari, when will I be able to see you with my mistress decorating her dearest one with flower ornaments in the grove cottage on the bank of her own lake. Explanations Sri Raghunath's friendship with Sri Rupa is complete. This is one sentence which I found needs maybe a little bit underlining. Maybe someone wants to. Sri Raghunath's friendship with Sri Rupa is complete. What does it mean actually? I'm asking you if someone wants to share on that. But I don't want to <clears throat> give pressure or something like this. I, it's just I. I have the feeling that it should be more light on this sentence. Maybe Goranga Sundara, Suniti, or I don't know if I see anyone here. <laughs> we are eager to hear you, Goravani, and then I can maybe also feel something. <laughs> So when a friendship can be complete, is this possible in this material world here? I think we all know that this is not possible. Because a friendship means 
a person who is fully himself has a friendship with a person who is fully himself. What does that mean? In your Sita Deha you are complete. If you are in your Sita Deha and the other person is in Sita Deha, then there may be a friendship which is complete. Otherwise, it's not possible. To uncomplete person cannot have a complete friendship. It's very logical. So that shows that this friendship is not an ordinary friendship. It's an eternal relation from eternal personalities. So we follow these two friends because we want to be like them. And their friendship is complete also on this platform when they were here. Why? Because they are eternally Manjuris. They are not like we Chivas. So if someone wants to maybe give a deeper understanding on this, or if not, I will just go on. I think also this uh, sweetness of the completion of our relationships as does is, is that we are always in this well-wishing feelings for each other. Like, in the beginning of this Vilapakushmanjali, the Guru Vandana or the prayers to the Guru was so sweet. In that prayer, Rupa Manjari is asking herself, Where is my Rati Manjari? Some beautiful thing is happening here, some uh, extraordinary meeting is happening of Radha Mohan. Where's my? My dearest Rati Manjari. And then when they meet, then Rati Manjari, as Tulsi Manjari, sees the mark on the lip of Rupa Manjari. And these two friends, they are so full of jokes and full of humorous uh, feelings and love for each other. You know, they, then Raghunath or Tulsi Manjari says, Oh, you have a mark on your lip. It is, uh, you are the most chaste lady or Dasi even here in Vrindavan. You are so known. What happened? And then like this um, relationship, like you say, Gauravani, we don't have easily, it's not easily found in this uh, realm of this part of this planet Earth in this material uh, existence. So complete for me also, it means that um, they are fully, like you say, on the spiritual uh, planet, in their hearts, in their minds, in their words. And I also um, would like to have uh, the mercy of this in my relationships more and more. I'm aspiring to have spiritual relationships like with the feeling of uh, supporting and helping each other to come to that uh, level of feeling ourselves as Darcy, expressing this in our words and also well wishing, you know, my friends and my friends are well wishing me. And I think that is very important. And that's why you said also this Zooms, we are so thankful that we can meet here and speak about this openly. Thank you so much, Suniti. Radhe Radhe Gauravani. <coughs> just, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Gauranga okay. Sundara just wanted to say something, or but. Yeah, Gauranga Sundara, please. Just say what you want. 
<clears throat> no, I'm just uh, what you said is uh, really really nice about this how to complete the friendship. I think that uh, uh, their friendship, uh, like Manjari, is already completed. So maybe Baba he here give example for us how to complete our relation with them. And I'm just wondering, I'm asking when when it will be complete in our case uh is is it mercy of radhika that will complete what is missing on and, and i must only to be eager for that so this is my question <laughs> Radhe, Radhe. Okay, I just wanted to say, and maybe we can connect with the question of Dani Diji, but uh, when Goravani was reading the Sanskrit, I liked to listen to him, and I just put a glance on the words of Sanskrit. And here in the words, never, there is no mentioning of the name of Rupa Manjari. It's mentioned just Saki. You see? With you, Sakam, I'm so close. I'm friends with you, my Saki. And it's not necessary to mention the name of Rupa Manjari. Because later on in the sentence, he is saying that actually this is Rupa Manjari without mentioning the name because he is explaining this situation in the Nikunja. So their closeness is based on Sadakavesh and in the Siddhavesh. In Sadakavesh, the best friend of Raghunath is Rupa Manjari, Rupa Goswami, sorry. And also in Swarupvesh, Rupa Manjari is her Tulasi's best friend. So it shows us that complete connection and relationship with Guru we cannot have only on Sadaka wish. It's necessary to have complete relationship in Swarup wish and for that we need swarup siddhi which is coming to the point of dianidiji's question when we receive kripa full kripa full kripa when our own spiritual identity becomes clear to us like goravani said then we will become complete First of all, I have to become complete. Then I recognize the persons who are already complete. If I am not complete, how can I recognize someone who is complete? I will always make mistakes, wrong understandings of that person because actually I am not complete. But when the two persons are complete, then they have complete friendship, even in Sadaka wish and also in the spiritual wish. So here in these words, Raghunath didn't mention the name of Rupa Manjari because she, he or she is so closed with Rupa Manjari that he wants to serve with her best Saki, best friend. He wants to serve in Nikunja, Radhika, in Radha Kunda. So this is the way how friendship, friendship is also expressed, not always black and white, direct, but in a subtle <laughs> way, they're handling each other, actually, with their words.
I just thank you, Gauravani, for that you are that you already read Sanskrit. Thank you so much. That means they eternally belong to each other also. And there's a very nice question Srila Anandadas Babaji is writing. I will read. Why does he suddenly perceive Sri Rupa Mandari? It's a question and he will answer. So it's good to concentrate to understand his answer because it's a little bit longer. These visions are also real and are as blissful as if he would directly meet her. In his Abhishta Suchana, Sri Raghunath writes, May my desire for Sri Radha's service be endowed with spotless thoughts of Sri Rupa and thus stay engaged in Sri Radha's devotional service. May my desire be endowed with spotless thoughts. And may I thus be engaged in Sri Radha's devotion and service. Because if there are spots in the thoughts, it's not possible to stay in Radharani's service. We were talking about this also the last days, maybe. <laughs> it's about offenses, we say offenses, Appa, Radha. A bad thought can separate us from Radharani's Brahma, because this Brahma is so, how you say, tzad, uh, hmm? tender. tender. So tender, yes, tender and soft. So one bad thought about another person who is completely engaged, can separate us. So that shows the pureness of Rati's heart and of Rupa's heart, how pure this connection is. It's so pure like their relationship with Radha herself, completely without any spot. And this is necessary to stay in that seva. So only we can check ourselves if there are spots. And if we find, then only we can ask our Guru Manjari and Nitai to please clean them up. Please work on them so that one day it will be completely spotless. Together with Sri Rupa, he wants to relish the vision. Together with Sri Rupa, he wants to relish the vision of his beloved deity. Yes. yes this Rana is Sindar, please. conclusion. This sentence concludes whatever Baba was saying and what Gauravani was explaining to us, giving us hints. He doesn't want to serve Radharani. He doesn't want to be with Radharani without his Guru Manjari. He wants to share same visions, same seva, same situations, same lilas with his Guru Manjari. And this is complete love, purest love. 
he doesn't want to be without Guru Manjari, with Radharani alone. If there is no my Guru Manjari, I, I even don't want to be with Radharani. This is loyalty to Radharani, but also loyalty in the friendship. Because Tulasi knows I would never approach Radhika without the blessings of Guru Manjari. I would never have desire at all to serve, to be on Radha Kund, if he didn't infuse this desire in my heart. So Baba is perfectly and so instructively is giving together with Sri Rupa, he wants to relish the vision of his beloved deity or Ishtadev or Swami, together. I'm nothing without you. And I don't want to be something without you. And Narottam Das Thakur in Prema Bhakti Changa Sunitiji knows much better. He always praying different prayers. You know, I want to be surrounded, not only with one, with so many Manjaris around you who are complete, who are perfect, and who are perfect in their Sadaka wish, but they are perfect in their Siddha wish. And for us Sadakas who didn't attend Attained perfection. This is the goal. And this is the, our prayer. I need the Kripa to be close with my Guru Manjari. And to be close with him, I need his Kripa to really become Manjari and to realize all other psychological, emotional things will not help me. This is the cry, this is the goal, this is the eagerness of Sadaka, neophyte, simple beginner. He doesn't have anything else but does this. I want, like Baba is saying again, together with my Guru Manjari, he wa I want to relish the vision of my beloved deity. I'm sorry, Radhe Radhe. What for you are sorry, actually? Did you give us so much inspiration, yes? <laughs> sorry, just a joke. So, together with Sri Rupa, he wants to relish the vision of his beloved deity. Sri Rupa and Tulasi have brought Swamini to the Kunj, which is decorated by Hari on the bank of Sri Radha Kunj. How beautiful is the bank of Sri Radha Kund. Radha Kunda Shyama Kunda Tirera Yeshoba Varnana Nayaya Radha Krishna Manaloba. The beauty of the banks of Radha Kund and Shyama Kund cannot be described. It fascinates Radha and Krishna. The beloved Skun is as dear to Krishna as his beloved is. It fast um, as soon as he sees it, he remembers her. Because the Kund is endowed with Priyachi's qualities of dearness, it bestows a love equal to Radha's 
on one who bathes there even once. Because the Kund is endowed with Priyachi's qualities of dearness, it bestows a love equal to Radha's on one who bathes there even once. So I find this a very interesting explanation also. The Kund has the qualities of Briyachi, the qualities of dearness. What are these qualities of dearness? She is very dear to her beloved, of course, but she is also very dear to her manjaris. And this is actually also describing her Audarya. In the same moment when she is in the highest feelings for her beloved, even in that moment she will think about her manjaris, her kinkaris. And she will share the highest possible feelings because she is Bhava Mai and Kripa Mai in one person. So that's why if someone is bathing in her Kunda even once, she bestows those a love equal to her own love on that person. And this is of course also Krishna's wish. Isn't that interesting and fascinating? And this is underlined by a quote from Chaitanya Charitamrita. Kundera Maduri no Radha Maduri Ma Kundera Mahima no Radhara Mahima Se Kunde Kabhara Ye Korasnana Tare Rata Sama Prema Krishna Koridhana The Kund is as sweet as Radha's sweetness and the Kund is as glorious as Radha's glories. Krishna gives a love equal to Radha's to anyone who bathes in this Kunda even once. The meeting takes place in this Kunda's Madan Sukata Kunja. So, and here for me is one very central point also of what we just were talking about because in this Kund she is giving the highest pleasure to her beloved. And in the same time, if one bad inside, she is giving her full mercy to that person. So it goes up to the highest level and it goes down to the most fallen person. So this is the blaze of her full audarya, of her generosity. And this is the chance for these fallen souls of Kali Yuga 
that we can bath in Radha Kunda through the words of Acharyas. By listening their sweet words, they are sprinkling our heart with the same qualities like Radha Kunda has. And now, in this moment, 50 devotees here, they, we have a chance, like a sadhakas, to bath in Radha Kunda. Because bathing in Radha Kunda means to bath in Radhika's love, Radhika's qualities. This is real bathing. And we cannot do it. <laughs> we are not so much fortunate for that. But we don't lack mercy. Because through the ears we can bath with the words of those personalities in which hearts the Radha Kunda always is flowing. Then maybe by Kripa we can be completely one day bath. Someone more wants to share on this, maybe? Beautiful that we are always uh, by each other's help. I am drawn in the presence of the moment of your words, Govangasuna, because, yes, just hearing about it and perishing the words of Baba and, of course, the mercy of our Gurudev and the desire to take that transcendental bath, it becomes close. It can happen by listening, by uh, visioning, by praying, doesn't need to far be so far away. It can happen now. And that's a good uh, memory. I like to always live somehow in that um, possibility of the now that Gurdiv also stresses so many times when we are together. It's happening now. It's not a past. It's in the presence, it's going on also now. We are now in the, at least in the European time. <laughs> it's a noon meeting, so that is also the time when they meet there. So thank you for reminding us. <laughs> thank you, Sunidi. That's the point. We are right now in the right time, in the right Leela at Radakund. Swamini's Hari, the enjoyer of the solitary grove, Radha's heart's friend, cannot be attained without taking exclusive shelter of Radha's lotus feet. Srila Narutam Das Thakur has said, Bracha pura vanitara, charana ashraya sara, koromana e kanta koriya. O mind, take exclusive shelter of the gopis of Braj. That is essential. Hari vibhushita kili kunja means. The kunja was decorated by Hari's mere presence, or Hari decorated this kunja with his own hands. While personally decorating the Tristin kunja, Swamini's Hari thought, My Priyachi, 
will be so eager to play certain pastimes with me after she sees how nicely I decorated this kunja. Adolescent Kishore Krishna is the transcendental youthful Cupid who is able to make the ordinary Cupid faint. Radhe. Yes, Radhe Radhe. Sorry, I have to jump in with these yes, big feelings that uh, <laughs> um, Baba is giving us here some nice um, nectar because he is explaining that the Sanskrit it often has many meanings. Like he is giving us two meanings, how to understand it, that by his presence, Hari is decorating the kunj. Of course, this is nice. But actually, as a manjari, we like the second translation better. <laughs> he decorated it with his own hands. And like this, he becomes Radha's Hari. He is in her service now. And that is what the Mandaris like to feel all the time, how our Swamini is so beautiful and, and uh, Hari is so eager to meet her. He is now in the Kunj and waiting for her. And that is a special feeling, a special situation of sweetness when the Lord becomes the servant of his beloved. Sometimes we know Swamini is waiting for him and then she is a little bit eager and she's waiting. Is he coming or not? <laughs> and now he is in this situation. She, he is waiting for her and he is so eager and he is so you know, looking at every detail, did I, is this color matching? Are these flowers uh, soft enough for my beloved to sit on? And so Baba is giving this, um, his meditation that how Krishna is thinking, my Priyaji will be so eager to play certain pastimes with me after she sees how nicely I decorated this kunj. So in this position, he is the eager one and he is going all into all the details, how she might feel when she comes. And that is always a, a very pleasant uh, feeling for the Mandaris because they always, uh, they always love Radhika more than Mohan. They always have this perspective that my Swamini is uh, victorious is the sweetest, is the most beautiful. And when uh, Hari himself is coming into this mood, he is actually also like a manjari a little bit, right? He becomes also like a student, the student of the prema of Srimati Radhika. By his sweet submissive mood, his sweet eager mood, and that is the... Um, the happiness of the maidservant when Hari is so eager to meet their beloved Swami. Thank you so much. This is Suniti. Makes the sweet even more sweet. So, adolescent Kishore is the transcendental youthful Cupid who is able to make the ordinary Cupid fame, mounting the chariot of the gopis' minds, he agitates Cupid. Koti Gopira Manorata Manomata Manomata Namadare Madan Mohan Chaitanya Charit Amrita. Hence, he is known as Madan 
Mohan. He who beautifies Radha's shoulder with his brilliant arm is our worshipable one. Radha Raman enjoys in the Kunja this innocent adolescence Mukta Kashur of him makes Swamini restless. Swamini becomes mad when she subdues Shyam in their love play. But she is still unsatisfied. So she will teach him some new games. Our hero is under her control and Swamini appropriates him to her own use. Rupa Manjari and Tulasi are relishing the sweetness of this pastime. This is the subject of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas meditation. Sri Chiva Goswami has written, May Radha and Madhava's sweetness attack my heart so that we may not go astray. Sri Chiva Goswami has written, May Radha and Madhava's sweetness attack my heart so that we may not go astray. So first, may Radha's sweetness attack my heart. First Radha. Then Madhava's sweetness, because without Radha, Madhava is not sweet. <laughs> there is no Madhava's sweetness without Radha. So may Radha and then following Madhava's sweetness in this Lila, it fits so wonderful to that Lila because why Madhava is so sweet now? Because he's fully controlled by Radharani. And this is what actually both of them, Rupa Manjari and Tulasi, are relishing. This is the sweetness they are relishing right now. And it's a wonderful prayer from, Ch from Chiva Goswami here. May that kind of sweetness attack my heart. Yes, may it attack. I don't count on it, it just comes. Yes, please attack my heart any moment. All the time, 24-7, please attack my heart. Conquer it. But please don't let there be any peace. Let it be attacked again and again. Because this is what we are looking for. The sweetness of such an exchange should always attack our heart again and again in a new way. Because these lilas are always new, always fresh. So what a wonderful meditation Srila Anandadas Babaji is giving us here with the words of the Goswamis. Such an expert. It's like you are cooking and you take the right spices. Not too much, not too less. Just the right ones.
in Sri Krishna Sandarbha 501 Anu is written May Radha and Madhava who are shining with a golden and bluish splendor whose eyes are dancing in a spotless festival of play who are anointed with endless cleverness in erotic artistry and who are greatly delighted by the nectarian fragrance of their mutual dearness. May that Radha and Madhava attack my mind in all respects with their sweetness. And for the Mandaris, this is the best example of the sweetness. When that charm is fully under control of Radharani, when our Mohan has no chance but to play like Swamini wants him to play. And he himself is greatly astonished. And this is what the Mandaris are relishing, that kind of sweetness. I have a question here. I'm meditating about this name because we have here in our temple in Germany, we have Radha Madan Mohan. So I was thinking or feeling this uh, name as a quality because Baba says at the same time he is an innocent adolescence, Mukta Kishore. Mukta means the one, yeah, the innocence that doesn't know. And like Swamini becomes the, um, the, the, the teacher, right? He, he is learning from her how to play. So I thought, ah, this is uh, the meaning. And then he also says, he who beautifies Radha's shoulder with his brilliant arm. So then I thought, wow. That is a picture that's interesting to, to go inside. Maybe like when Krishna and Balaram, then also Krishna has his, his arm or his you know, like on Krishna or on Balaram's shoulder. So I thought maybe it is a possibility to feel like that, that Swami Krishna is now completely relying on Swamini in, in the game, in the play. That's why he is also so innocent. And that might be the quality of Madan Mohan. He is so innocent, he is so mukta, inexperienced, he just let her uh, take over everything, every movement, every facet of their game. Maybe you want to share on this. These are really wonderful thoughts. And this is also the base for Madan Mohan Mohini, for the name. Because this Madan Mohan has to be controlled by someone, otherwise he's lost. 
completely inexperienced in such affairs, who will take care of him? And like, Are they? Yes, go around the sun, please. I just want to share actually that Krishna is Mukda only in Vrindavan. Krishna is not Mukda in other places, in Vaikuntha, in Mathura, Dwaraka, Ayodhya, and so on and so on. He is Mukda only when he is Krishna. He is not Mukda when he is Narayan, he is not Mukda when he is Ramachandra and so on and so on, Varakadish. He is Mukda only in Vrindavan, because this is the mood of Vrindavan. Everyone is Mukda. Because Mukda means innocent, but Mukda means ignorance also. From what he is ignorant, <laughs> that he is Supreme Personality of Godhead. He forgot it. Because he needs this kind of of forgetfulness to exchange the sweet innocent love purest kind of kevala bhakti kevala bhakti from his devotees so he needs this quality of mukda innocence or ignorance that he can receive that love exchange that love and re reciprocate reciprocately give back that love. And for that, he needs to forget that he is Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is the main quality of Krishna in, only in Vrindavan. And everything is going under the influence of Yoga Maya and Lila Shakti. They know his desire that he wants to become innocent, ignorant, sometimes foolish. How Supreme Personality of Godhead can allow himself to be foolish? It's not possible. Only if he forgets. Because his devotees, they also don't want to remember all other qualities of him, but only sweetness and beauty. And they are also Mugda. They are also very innocent. They are very ignorant. But this kind of ignorance is under the Yoga Maya. It's not the same ignorance which conditioned souls have with material Maya. This Yoga Maya is helping that different relationship, different rasas can be exchanged in a sweet mood. Without this, you can notice he is Mukda Kishora, but he is also Mukda Kumar. When he is a little boy, he is also Mukda. Innocent. And because of this quality, Mother Yashoda can give him his motherly love like a stream, like a flow, and he can receive like a Gopal. Same goes to the friends, same goes to the Sakis, but same goes specially, especially like Sunitiji said, especially with Radharani, he is really Mugda in the presence of his teacher of Prema. This is the highest <laughs> stage of his innocence, ignorance, which is helping him to be humble and to receive all love from Radharani's heart. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Thank you so much, Goranga Sundara. I actually, I, I love this picture also that uh, Balaram and Krishna leaning on each other. Bala means power. Huh? Who is the highest power? What is the highest power?
Swaminis Madanakya Mahabhav is the highest power. So then even that person who forget that he is God has to lean on that power. We should remember too that in the form of Lord Chaitanya, the purpose of the appearance is to learn. Already there, he says, I do not know what it is to relish me. So I will appear in the mood of one who relishes me, and I will learn what it is. So even there, where he's not an innocent child, he's eager to learn and requires the the Leela in order to, to learn. Thank you, Udava. So we will go on reading if there's nothing else to share now. Sri Jiva Goswami means to say, may the indescribable sweetness of Radha and Madhava's combined form that there will be not be the slightest other perception. I think the internet was unstable, so I will again. May the indescribable sweetness of Radha and Madhava's combined form arise in my heart in such a way that there will be not the slightest other perception. The word Akranta means may this sweet dual form not leave my heart even slightly. I'm so, I'm so sorry to interrupt. Just one thought. Uh, I think it's lovely that the way that uh, Ananta Das Babaji reformulates Jiva Goswami. And the difference between the two is important. For Ananda, Bas, Ananda Das Babaji, the, the Leela is happening in the heart, in our hearts, within us. And uh, he says, what does it say? That it will, the combined form will arise in my heart, he says. So even though farther up we talked about an attack of Cupid on Cupid, we should under not understand that this attack is somehow external to our own souls. But that our souls are that it's happening within our own souls as part and parcel of the soul of, of uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a very nice meditation. Uh, Udavji, I love this. And the next uh, sentence is they also, Baba is also giving more of this feeling. Because the, what does it mean that this sweet dual form may not leave my heart even slightly? That means that all my whole heart, my whole existence, my whole being, and my whole identification is uh, as a Darcy of 
meeting of Radha Mohan. Mm. It's another name for Swarup, isn't it? Yes. When this is uh, so much in the heart, in my heart or any of our hearts, that this, the whole our whole being will be illuminated by it. Means this golden and blue form, they are always dancing inside, and we are just watching, and we are just serving, and try to make it my eternal reality by of course remembering it but also like to live in this to live always in this memory and to live in this feeling and then everything will be illuminated no yes mm. from there everything else becomes different right mm. Very from nice. that yes. feeling, from that feeling as the base feeling, everything else will transform. It also means to say, "Make my heart Vrindavan," because only in Vrindavan, this blue and golden lights are always shining. And only in Vrindavan, Sri Rata's right eye and Sri Krishna's left eye are clad in it by wonderful movements due to meeting the Beloved. And it is as if their indescribable bodily sweetness is dancing. So it wants to say, make my heart Vrindavan and let them dance in my heart always. In different ways. Like their eyes are dancing, their limbs are dancing, they are dancing the Rasa dance in so many ways. And more further deep Rasa Leelas happening in the heart. Because I was thinking why it's always said about these lights. Because it begins like this, isn't it? If a devotee gets a darshan, Gurudev said this also, there's just a short light for one second. Who experienced it, they, they know what I'm talking about. I think it's very clear that this light is just shortly coming in one moment for one second maybe sometimes it stays a little bit longer and the lights are getting a little bit bigger but actually this is the start it's starting like that and they are coming more near and they stay longer and this is actually the end of the meditation they will be always there Brindavan is in the heart it's established and they will always dance and play in our hearts. So what a wonderful meditation. And it goes on. Srila Anandadas Baba wants to put us more deep inside. Their bodies are adorned with limitless arts of ecstatic union such as embracing and kissing and so on. Shri Shri Radha Mohan's bodies are anointed with mutual love just as the bodies of other heroes and heroines may be anointed with kumkuma. In other words, the heart in which this sweetness that is clad by the nectar of mutual love shines, remains scented by the fragrance 
of Sri Sri Radha Mohan's love. In this eternal possession, the devotees reach the goal of Nikuncha Seva and its complete relish. Complete. Again, this word comes here. Complete friendship and complete relish. Again, within these pastimes of meeting, there are again so many pastimes of separation. Because without this duality of union and separation, there would be no variety of relish. Therefore, so many situations like control of the superiors, going and coming in and out of the house and peak within the groves or cure. Swamini is not satisfied in the pastimes. Beautiful Shams crown, pearl necklace, flower garland and loincloth have all broken and fallen off. So Swamini says, Sundara, just look at your condition. Wait, let me decorate you. I have spoiled your looks and I will make you look nice again. Just sit down for a while. Then she tells Rupa Manjari, Rupa, come here. We are going to pick some flowers. Swamini takes Rupa along into the gardens and picks flowers of her own joys there. Then she comes back into the kunj and along with Rupa Mandri begins to decorate her brananat with ornaments made of these flowers. Tulasi stands on one side of the kunj and floats in oceans of bliss as she sees her Ishwari's expertise in service. She thinks, O oh, Swamini, only through you such service, such services are possible. Only through you such services are possible. Meanwhile, because of Swamini's touch, Shyam's body becomes adorned with ecstatic bodily symptoms such as sweat drops that obstruct Swamini's service. Swamini gives a hint to Tulasi to stand by her hero's side and to fan him. Because of Tulasi's fanning, Nagara's sweat drops dry up. But now Tulasi begins to fan with such humorous expertise that the breeze she makes causes Swamini's clothes, like her blouse, to loosen. Shyam becomes agitated from seeing Radhika's sublime limbs half covered, and this causes him to engage in activities that obstruct Swamini's initial activities of dressing him. Tulasi softly giggles, 
But still, she won't stop her expert fanning. Swamini then rebukes her with her meaningful glances, as if saying, Tulasi, how naughty you are! How can I decorate my Nagara when you fan him like that? Fan him nicely, so that he will sit down peacefully. After receiving Swamini's sublime chastisement, Tulasi blissfully finds a new way to fan Krishna. Now she starts fanning in such a way that Swamini's bodily fragrance enters into Shyam's nostrils and his patience is destroyed once more. Blessed is this maidservant. Blessed is her service. Nadi Garavani, so beautiful. You pick this verse and the purport. How now Mohan is fully in the hands of Swamini and all her Dasis. <laughs> He's fully helpless again. And every service they do is just to create more pleasure and more fun. So I was um, thinking, yes, that is what uh, what Gurudev always says. Even a foolish child can understand this. And then I was reflecting on this muktata. This innocence. So, if if we have, if I get, can get this innocence in my heart back, then all of this is so much beautiful fun, and so much laughter, and so much humor, and it's not at all agitating the material body. It becomes the purest of the pure. And it is purifying my conditioned heart in which the blue and the yellow has not combined to be, be always Vrindavan. <laughs> so that came to me when you when you were reading it's so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Suniti. And the innocence never ends, my dear. It goes on and on. The the prema keeps flowing. The, the teacher keeps teaching. The pastime is eternal. And so we're always innocent and always growing. It's always new, the feeling. Fresh and young and new, this feeling of love that we're receiving ourselves. But because the pastime is going on in our hearts. Eternal innocence. <laughs> o Swamini, only through you such services are possible. Yes, Uddhava, they are eternal and the situation is eternal, ever fresh. They are always youthful and they always need these services. What wonderful services! What is Tulasi making here? And what a wonderful exchange between her and Swamini. When we hear that it is a rebuke, well, that's a rebuke in a game. It doesn't mean like we would understand a rebuke. It's a lovely game. It's a rebuke to change the scene, actually. 
So Swamini is like making like this. Now Tulasi, you make it like that. And now Tulasi, you make it like this. But actually they are working together to make this beloved completely mad. Make him completely mad in such a humorous, innocent way that the love, the Brahma is going up to the highest state. The waves are coming up more and more and even more and covering completely all senses, engaging all the senses, the mind of Mohan fully. No chance of him to get out and we all know how this mind of him is. <laughs> Not so steady like Swamini's. So this is actually Swamini's expertise. Only through her such services are possible because only she knows exactly what is going on in the heart and in the mind of her beloved and is giving this information one to one immediately to her maidservants. And what a blessed service this is to make the person like Mohan completely crazy for Swamini. Together they are making him crazy. And this chastisement is sublime. It's written here. It's a sublime chastisement. Because then Tulasi blissfully finds a new way to find Krishna. <laughs> now she is going to make him crazy. Rade. Yes. It's a perfect example for us, Sadakas, how it's completely necessary to connect our hearts with the hearts of pure Nitya Siddha Manjaris. By meditation on this small, particular, but deep, with many varieties, Lila, we can receive all expertise, all necessary feelings, all necessary way of thinking of Manjari. Through our bhajan, in which we have to stop our mind and feelings and to concentrate on this simple, sweet, charming lila. We don't have to go further, we don't have to go jump, jump in another sentences, verses, explanations, just try to fix the mind in what is most easiest for him. And if it is meditation on this Lila now, then we can continue after this Zoom. And this is very, very helpful. We, because we will prolong our bhajan. And who knows what will happen. And by mid bhajan on expertise of Raghunath and his expert, relationship with Radhika, we Sadaka slowly but surely can enter deep in this flow of their mutual love. So connection 
with Nitya Sita, Manjaris are essential part of our sadhana. Because through this proper connection, flow of mercy will penetrate and be infused in our heart. We have Baba is saying, I like this statement. We sadhakas have to learn how to think like a manjaris. How to feel like a manjaris. And ultimately how to act or serve like a manjaris. And it's not possible through the books. We have to connect our mind and heart with those who are already experts in this process of thinking like a manjari, feeling like a manjari, expertly doing like a manjari. And now we have a chance in this moment to try to hold this small sequ sequences of this lila, this small picture, and hold it in the heart and our consciousness and our mind, and allow this lila through our bhajan to bloom. And this is the practice. And there is no play, and this is the way how we can open ourselves to be attacked. If we always protect ourselves from attack of loving pastimes, <clears throat> they will not come inside of our eternal being. But if we are open ourselves for this kind of attack, then other attack of material nature, material consciousness will not attack our existence. So bhajan is the way, bhajan is the protection. Bhajan is the goal. But only when it's deeply and tightly connected with the hearts of Mitya Siddha Manjaris, including there also our Guru Manjari, and so on and so on. So just make experiment. Gauravanaji choose perfect words for perfect meditation or bhajan. Radhi. Thank you very much. In order to relish these pastimes, a devotee must awaken his swarup. I was just thinking, in order to awaken his swarup, he must also relish these pastimes. So it's one sentence, two meanings, and Srila Ananda Das Babaji is giving us this. Even when a person like me is in the right environment, living in Braj, it does not work. The mind is so stubborn and crooked. In material consciousness, nobody can approach Radha and Krishna. One must enter into Swarup Avesh, Bhuta Shuddhi, the identification as a servant of the deity, is also required during deity worship. Swarup Avesh is the Bhuta Shuddhi of the Gaudiya. Vaishnavas. During mental service, 
one must awaken one's Swarup. And this is similarly required while practicing other limbs of devotion. A practicing devotee should always identify himself like this. I am Radha's Kinkari. I am Radha's Kinkari. No one can delight Swamini and Sham as much as the Kinkari, for she actually establishes their meeting, which makes them very happy. And this is the Seva. We want to make them happy. They are so pleased with the kinkeries that they even give themselves to her. God Baniji, can I inter interrupt you just shortly? Because yeah, you read course. during mental service. One must awaken one's Swarup. This is the first instruction. And this is similarly required while practicing other limbs of devotion. So when we are practicing Shravanam, we should try to do as much as we can to do it through Swarup. When we are practicing Kata or Pata, reading, as much as we can, we should do it through Swarup. Chanting, Maha Mantra, Diksha Mantra especially. Everything what cooking, cleaning, whatever limb of devotion devotee is practicing or doing exercise, he has somehow or other See, he has to tune himself with this identification. I am Radharani's maidservant. And this is the basic of Sambada for someone who wants to become Radharani's maidservant. From that base, base, I am Radharani's maidservant. All desires are developing even more and more, and they are becoming intense. And re re <clears throat> when devotee receives other ornaments of Manjari Bhav, like name, clothes, colors, and so on and so on, seva, he can continue to practice this bhajan even deeper. But essential point is Sambhat, I am made servant of Radharani. And whatever I do, even if I don't have Swarup, yet, for these different reasons, it can be. I want to tune myself with this mood. I am Radharani's maidservant, and this is my desirable goal and relationship. I want everything what I'm doing now, I'm talking, I want to speak through this spiritual identity. I'm listening, I want to listen through this identity, not through identity of this body. This body is just a tool, but either identification is the state of consciousness. So I like very much what Baba is saying here. During mental service, Manasa said, practicing, meditation, one has to do it through Swarup, but also similarly, this Swarup is required for practicing other parts of devotional 
limbs. So this means 24 7. Even if I'm working on the job, this is my bhajan, this is my worship also. I'm never forgetting that I'm Radharani's maid servant in the factory, in the office, in the taxi, and in that way. I'm trying as much as I can. It's not perfect, I know. As much as I can. I'm trying to practice bhajan kriya. I just wanted to emphasize this. I'm glad that you did that, because I also think it should be very clear. And I just wanted to give a very little example on that. Because when you think I am Radha's kinkari, and now you're going to do a seva, like, oh, I have to cook. What are you meditating on? I am cooking for Radharani and Krishna? No. This doesn't fit. Just a moment. I am the kinkari of Radha. Who is cooking? Ah, Radharani is cooking for her beloved. And I am just the maidservant standing beside her in the kitchen, cutting for her. Maybe bringing some wood for her. Maybe first I, I clean her lotus feet because she came and wants to enter the kitchen, like this. And in this way, we come in the right meditation. And the base is, and I'm so thankful, Anandadas Babaji is bringing it to one sentence. I am Radhika's kinkari. That's it. This is the base. And then he wants to enlighten us give us hope. No one can delight Swamini and Shyam as much as the kinkari. So go for it. Because of course, if you do something at one point, you also want to hear, oh, it's so nice that you did it, and it's so wonderful how you did it, and like this. Only Swamini can give you that, that your heart is fully satisfied. If you hear from Swamini that she is delighted by your seva, then your heart is not only fully satisfied, it will cook over by Mahabhav feelings. So go for it. I am Radha's kinkari. That's the point. Sri Lila Shuka had said, Apasya Vrindavana Pada Lasyam Upasyam Anyam Navilokayama Krishna Karanamrit. We cannot see any other object of worship than the dancing feet of Krishna in Vrindavan. Sri Krishna Das Kaviraj, also in the connection of Kinkaris, that means we cannot see anything else while the dancing in the rasa dance, then Swamini's lotus feet, of course. What else? <laughs> Sri Krishna Das Kaviraj has written in his Saranga Rangada commentary on this verse, we don't look at any other object of worship than the jewel-like young pair of Braj that is devoted to dancing in Sri Vrindavan. The loyalty 
of the mandaris goes even deeper. Allegiance to the great words of the Goswamis leads to the steady wakefulness of one's Swarup. Again, allegiance to the great words of the Goswamis leads to a steady wakefulness of one's Swarup. Sriman Mahaprabhu gave them, the Goswamis, the duty, do bhajan and in this way teach the world. Shyam's desire now also arises in Swamini and Hari takes all obstacles to Radhika's union with him, such as shame, fear, and opposition, away. The word Sringaritam in the text also means that Swamini makes Shyam fit once more for pastimes in the Sringara Ras, the erotic flavor. Swamini has strung a flower garland, but there was no way to bind the ends together. So she binds them up behind his neck. Then she comes up before him and asks him, How do you like your garland? Shyam smiled slightly. Although he tries to find words to praise Swamini's craftsmanship, he cannot express himself. Their jests meet each other when Swamini tries to fix the garland behind Krishna's neck and she bends over his shoulder. Because of his movement, the garland gets smashed. And Briyachi says, Just see, I have ruined your garland. And starts stringing another one. Swamini is decorating Sringaritam, the embodiment of spiritual erotic flavor, Sringararas and thus immerses him in Sringararas. While she puts a crown on Shyam's head, Shyam smiles slightly. Oh, what nectar! I can't allow to fall, I, I can't allow that to fall and be wasted. Swamini says and goes forward to taste some of this nectar by kissing Krishna. When she does this, Krishna's crown also falls off and she must put it on again with the help of Sri Rupa Manjari. Tulasi is astonished when she sees how expert Swamini and Rupa Manjari are in decorating. Just then the vision ends and Sri Raghunath rolls on the bank of Radhakund, crying pitifully. Tulasi prays for Darshan while Swamini decorates Shyam. O Saki Rupa Manjari, without your grace, the Kuncha Seva cannot be attained. Please always give me the shade 
of your lotus feet. In an enchanting cottage, in a kunj, on the beautiful bank of Radha Kun. You and my mistress Radha lovingly and delightedly decorate her heart's lover, Bachendra Kumar, with different floral ornaments, so that his limbs become very beautiful. When will I make my life useful by seeing this intimate pastime with my own eyes? Jai Jai Shri Rati. Here ends the explanation of verse number 69 of Vilap Kusumanjali.